the, the union of this wonderful couple. In Genesis chapter 18, it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. It's not good to be by yourself. It's not good to be alone. Either male or female, it's just not good to be alone. The loneliness can become a, a very difficult one. But in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 and 23, it also says this. So man, so to be, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it, nourisheth it, even as, it is, even as the Lord of the church. For we are all members of his body, his flesh, his bones. For this cause shall man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning the church of Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular love his wife even as himself. And his wife see that she is reverenced of her husband. Making a decision to get married is not something that needs to be taken lightly. We discussed this in our uh, our time that we spoke together. In Genesis chapter 2, 23 through 24, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she has been taken out of man. Therefore shall man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. We're going to do something that's going to commemorate your, your wedding. Have you ever heard of the lighting of the candles? Yes. We purchased some candles for you. And I would like you, Andre, I'll let you stand right here and I'll let you come around on this side. Do apologize for the candles. We had them, huh? Well, what happened is we had them up here last night. And uh, the heat this morning, it made it made them it made them look like Z's instead of candles. So, so what we want you to do is what's happening is there's two lives that are becoming one. I don't know if you've seen this before. Have you? Yes, you've seen. Okay. What we want you to do is we want you to light. They're going to each light their own candles. It's the only thing we have. We don't, you know. So we want you to light this candle. Okay. No, no. She lights that. That's not your candle. That's her candle. Okay. As these candles are burning, as these candles are burning separately, there's two lights that represent these candles. As they got married and the vows were given, those candles were essentially blown out and they became one flesh. Just as they become one flesh, this represents what they what has happened to their life. Now I'd like you to take the candles and take them out, or you can hold them just gently. Be careful that they don't fall. And I want you together light the other candle. Both together. Now blow the candle that you're holding out. This represents the two lives that now have become one life. Snort. 
<laughs> See, there's also things that happen when you become married. There's a level that we need to obtain. And there's six of them. I'm not preaching a second message, so don't get worried. Everybody's standing and they will get mad at me if I continue too long. Especially the ones with high heel shoes. <laughs> Faithfulness is the first one. When you said your vows, you promised to be faithful one to another as long as you live. Loyalty to your spouse is the foundation of trust in marriage. When loyalty and faithfulness disappears, so does trust. And once trust is broken, it's very difficult to reestablish. In Mark 10 and 9, it says, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Number two is honor. Brother Webster again speaks to us in his definition, the Webster Dictionary. He defines honor as high respect, esteem. It's next level respect. And as marriage married couples, we're meant to give the highest regard to one another. To show honor in the way we speak to each other, to the way that we behave way that we conduct ourselves both in and out of the home. Right. Romans 10 and 12 says, be devoted one to another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Humility. Pride and arrogance have no place in a harmonious marriage. Instead, we're meant to be humbled, unassuming. We shouldn't jump to the worst case conclusions about one another. And we must always be ready to step up and admit when we are wrong. Humility means not pushing our opinion on the other one, even though we're right. And giving our spouse the floor when we might think we really want it ourselves. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Number four, patience. It can be a challenge to be patient with one another, especially when it comes to inevitable personality clashes. Those are going to happen. Personality clashes are going to happen. We have with our spouse from time to time. But the scriptures urge us to exercise patience <clears throat> and to show kindness when we're feeling irritated with one another. It's one of the many attributes that helps us keep patience in our marriage. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing one another love. Understanding because a marriage consists of two very different people merging their lives and creating a home together, it's important for us to try to understand each other, especially when our spouses, it's hardest to understand. Practicing empathy, not just sympathy, but empathy, the art of stepping into our spouse's shoes and seeing the situations from his or her angle. will help you as you work daily to understand each other. In 1 Peter 3 and 7, in the same way, your husband must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. Number six. In marriage, unity. In marriage, husbands and wives are on the same team. Two people who have chosen to be joined together as one. Unity doesn't mean you have to agree on everything or have all the same preferences, likes and dislikes. Instead, it means sticking together in spite of your differences. It's a, con it's a, a conscious decision to work together to reach a consensus or an agreement. 
compromising when necessary as you make decisions together, both big and small. Colossians 3.14 And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them together in perfect unity. Is there another attribute we can